All right, here's number one. They give us a triangle, and each angle is marked with three um, angle expressions. And so all we have to do is use the triangle sum theorem, which says if you add up all three, you'll get 180 degrees. So we're going to take 4x plus 20 degrees, and 3x minus 8 degrees, and 5x, and we're going to add them up add them up and let it equal 180 degrees. Okay, at this point we're just going to combine some like terms. So we need to combine 4x and 3x and 5x. Those will all add up to, what is that, 7x plus 5 more x is 12x. And then we'll add up the positive 20 and the negative 8. That looks like it'll add up to positive 12 degrees is equal to 180. We'll subtract 12 from both sides. So we end up with 12x is equal to, subtract that away, we get 168 degrees. And hopefully, um, if your teacher has allowed it, you just type this into the calculator. We're going to divide both sides by 12. So those cancel and we get x is equal to, we'll get x is equal to 14. Now, x is equal to 14, but you'll notice that's not really what they asked for. They, it asked for finding all the angle measures. In other words, we have to take our 14 and plug it in. So uh, let's see, 3 times 14 would be 42. Take away 8, that comes out to be 34 degrees. Okay, and over here 5 times 14, that would be 70 degrees. And let's see, 4 times 14, that would be 56. Plus 20 degrees more gives us 76 degrees. Alright, so we've got those three and we just have to kind of put them where they belong. So uh, 34 degrees goes here, 70 degrees would be the middle angle, and 76 degrees would be the largest. Of course, there'd be a really easy way to check your work. You could add those three up, and it, sh it has to make 180 degrees, especially if, you, uh, if your teacher's okayed it and you're sitting there with a calculator. That would be an easy way to kind of double check your work. All right, here's number two. They tell us that quadrilateral ABCD isn't just any four-sided figure, it's a rhombus. So if it's a rhombus, maybe we can mark up the figure. In fact, this would be a really good idea in just about every problem on this test that involves a quadrilateral. Whatever they tell you about it, you can kind of like add what you know to the picture and it should make the problem uh, that much easier. So if this is a rhombus, I know that it's equilateral. I would also know that where the diagonals intersect, that would all make a right angle. I would even know that th these angles get bisected, so these are the same. Oops, that should only have one. Okay, those are the same, and then these are also all going to be the same. Okay, and that happens every time you have a rhombus. So if they tell me angle C, D, E, angle C, D, E, this one right here is 55 degrees. And then they want the measure of angle ABC. Where is angle ABC? It's right here, this whole thing. Well, if this is 55, then all of these are 55. Is that right? And if they want the whole thing, wouldn't I just take 55 degrees and add 55 degrees more to it? And that's going to give me, what, 110 degrees? The measure of angle CDE is 110 degrees. Okay, in a rhombus, the diagonals are perpendicular, and the diagonals also bisect the angles. All right, here's number three. They give us this quadrilateral, and it says find the value of x in the parallelogram. So if this quadrilateral is a parallelogram, and they're telling us it is, then we can use what we know about uh, the angles in the parallelogram. So I guess what I should do first is notice that I've got this angle, this acute angle, and this acute angle right here. So are these opposite angles or are they consecutive angles? Because that really makes a difference. So do you th see that these are not consecutive, they are opposite angles? And opposite angles in a parallelogram are congruent with each other. In fact, you can even tell, well, these are both acute. If they had given me consecutive angles, then this one's obtuse and this one's acute. That might help you remember that they are supplementary. 
After all, this is the problem on the practice test, but the problem on the real test might switch to being consecutive angles. You, you kind of need to know both. So if, they, um, if they're opposite angles, they must be equal. In other words, 4x minus 12 degrees would have to be equal to 66 degrees. All right, all we have to do is solve this. So it looks like I'm going to add 12 to both sides. That gives me 4x is equal to, uh, what would that come out to be? 78 degrees. If I divide both sides by 4, x will come out to be 19 0.5 and on this case all they wanted was the value of x and I figured that out so there's my answer. All right, here is number 5. They give us some weird quadrilateral. Doesn't it's not a parallelogram, it's not a rectangle, none of those. Uh, but they do give us three of the angles that are inside of this one and they all we have to do is figure out the one that is missing. So, what do we know about all four angles in any quadrilateral? they add up to 360. So what I need to do is take these three, 78 degrees and 129 and 97, hopefully on our calculator if your teacher says that's okay. You add all those together, you get 304 degrees. All right, so these are 304. Whatever this one is, it has to be the rest of the 360. So I will simply take 360 and I'll subtract away 304 and whatever's left has to be what's left for this last angle. All right, I can't take four from 36, so I'm going to borrow. So that's gonna give me 35 minus 30, that's 56 degrees. That would be the measure of that last angle. All four angles in any four-sided quadrilateral, all four angles always add up to 360 degrees. All right, here's number six. They tell us that PQRS is a square. So that's like the most special quadrilateral that we can have. And they give us a few facts. So we should probably just mark up our figure. They tell me that from T to Q right here is 5X minus 2. And from T to P, that would be this one right here, it is 2X plus, plus 7. All right, so what's the deal with the diagonals? Well, a square is a type of rectangle. And in a rectangle, all of the diagonals are all the same length. And so that would happen in a square as well. So what can we say about 5x minus 2? And I shouldn't have put a degree mark there. That's a segment length. And 2x plus 7, what can we say about them? Well, they must be equal to each other. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and solve. I would subtract 2x from both sides. So we would get, what, 3x minus 2, and that's going to equal 7. I would add 2 to both sides to cancel out those. Now 3x is equal to 9, so that if I divide both sides by 3, x is equal to 3. All right, now um, they didn't actually ask for what x is equal to. They want to know the length of segment TS. So they want to know how far is it from here to here. Well. Here's where you have to keep in mind that all of these pieces in a, di in a rectangle or a square, which is a type of rectangle, it's an equilateral rectangle, they're all the same. So if I plug my 3 into any of these, it will tell me how long that is. So I think I'm just going to use the 2x plus 7. So 2 times whatever x is plus 7, I'm going to plug in the 3 there. So that would be what? 6 plus 7. So that all comes out to be 13. Each of these pieces would be 13. So how long is TS? TS has a length of 13. All right, here's problem number six. First of all, it's really important that we notice that they tell us we have a parallelogram. Um, and so do you notice that this question is about the angles? So we know two things in, about the angles in a parallelogram. First off, we know that the opposite angles, that would be like angle B right here and angle D right here, right? Opposite straight across from are the same. So if angle B was 60 degrees, angle D would be 60 degrees. And the other thing we know is about the consecutive angles. And that would be like angle B and A. Those are in a row, right? That's what the word consecutive means. And those add up to be 
180 degrees. So they have given us a bunch of statements right here and we have to choose when they are always true. So how about angle A and angle C? Do they add up to 180? Well these are opposite angles. They're the same. They don't add up to 180 so that one is wrong. That one's not always true. How about angle A is equal to angle C? Well aren't they opposite angles? That one is true. Okay, how about angle A is equal to angle D? Nope, those are consecutive angles. They would add up to 180. Uh, that's not true. Angle C plus angle D would add up to 180. Are these opposite angles or consecutive angles? Those are consecutive angles. Yes, they add up to 180. And then lastly, if we added up all four angles, would we get 180? No, all four angles add up to 360. So that one is out. So this one and this one are the true ones. And it says, which property of a parallelogram is shown by the markings? So what, did, what do they got going here? They're showing that this angle is congruent to this one and this one is congruent to this one. So isn't that basically talking about the opposite angles are what, congruent to each other? So if you said the opposite angles are congruent. That's the property that's being shown here. That, that's what you're looking for. Okay. In fact, there are four properties in a parallelogram. The opposite sides are congruent, but that wasn't about the sides. The opposite angles are congruent. That's the one this one was about, but couldn't it also be about the consecutive angles being supplementary? And the fourth property of parallelograms that you need to know coming into this test is that the diagonals bisect each other. That, that is the four properties that, um, that exist for a parallelogram. If you know all four, whatever thing we show you, you'll be able to get. And, and notice, it's not like you even have to have these completely memorized. I mean, the picture is showing you what, what you would pick, and this will be a multiple choice problem. All right, number 11 gives us two quadrilaterals, WORK and PQTS. They tell us basically that WORK is a parallelogram and PQTS is a rectangle. And it says fill in possible values for A, B, C, and D. Can you see that each part, can you see that's what's marking the diagonals and its lengths? So they want us to mar give values for A, B, and C, D to show that this would be a parallelogram and show that this would be a rectangle. So I guess something we have to keep in mind, you just need to know that in a parallelogram, the diagonals bisect each other and then these would be congruent. Okay, so how would we show that? Well, we have to show that C and D are equal to each other and A and B are equal to each other. And do you kind of notice that C and D are longer than A and B, so maybe we can keep that in mind. Maybe I'll say something like C and D would both be 3, and then A and B, I'm going to say that both of them would be 2. And by filling in these values, you are showing your teacher that you know that the diagonals bisect each other and what that would really mean. All right, if we come down here to the rectangle, what you need to remember is not only do they bisect each other, because a rectangle is a parallelogram, but they're all the same. So what would you do to show that they're all the same? Wouldn't you just put the same number in for all of them? Okay, so I think I'm going to put two in for all of them. What if you put one in for all of them? That would be fine, or you could put three in for all of them, but you have to show that you kind of know that all of those sections of the diagonals are congruent to each other in a rectangle but in a parallelogram, they're just bisecting each other. All right, here's number 12. Number 12 is kind of a logic question. It says, Mark says that all quadrilaterals are parallelograms. And then it says, Tom says that all parallelograms are quadrilaterals. Who is incorrect and why are they incorrect? So one of these people is right and one of these people is wrong. And I know it can seem a little confusing. It almost sounds like they're saying the same thing. But my advice to you on this problem would be to kind of draw this out. So would, would it be possible, he says all quadrilaterals are parallelograms. Do you think you could draw a quadrilateral that's not a parallelogram? Well, couldn't I draw some like weird shape like this? 
is that's that's a quadrilateral right one two three four sides but is it a parallelogram no so actually mark is the one he's wrong wrong and we're gonna write about why why he's wrong we're gonna basically say just because something has four sides doesn't mean it's opposite sides have to be um, parallel but um, what what if I tried to draw a parallelogram and then ask myself will it always be a quadrilateral so parallelograms kind of look like this every time you draw a parallelogram would you always get a quadrilateral yeah a parallelogram is a type of quadrilateral that's like asking if all chihuahuas are dogs well a chihuahua is a type of dog are all dogs chihuahuas though so one of these things is like the big thing like dog and one of them is like a type of that that's the one that's true the one that says that the type is what all of them are I hope you can understand that that's that's not true right are um, are all boys human yes are all humans boys no some humans are girls right so um, so that's what that's the way you kind of have to think about this so this one's the wrong the one that's wrong so I'm gonna write mark is and we'll use their word incorrect and let's see why is he incorrect a uh, maybe I'll write a polygon right that's the fancy word for a shape a polygon can have four sides without the opposite sides being parallel right it doesn't that doesn't have to happen just because it has four sides without the opposite sides being parallel okay you just need to do your best to explain like why why one of them is wrong all right number 13 tells us that QRST right here is a parallelogram and that the equation of line QR so the equation of line QR right here here's QR the equation of that line is it's what y equals 2x minus 3 and hopefully you can see that that's an equation in slope intercept form in fact its slope is 2 and its y intercept would cross like down here at 0 negative 3 okay and what they want us to do is write the equation of line st so who are they talking about line st is this one right here and they tell us the coordinates of point t right down here are 5 negative 1 does, does it not look like over 5 down 1 that looks good okay so so why does it matter that this is a parallelogram well if it's a parallelogram what's going to be true about those opposite sides they're parallel and if this one has a slope of 2 what is going to be the slope on this one well parallel lines must have the same slope all right the problem is we don't know we have this one point but it's not an intercept can you see that we have a point the point that we have on this red line is 5 negative 1 and we have the slope so can you see that we need to use the point slope form what does the point slope form look like it looks like this y minus y1 equal to m times x minus x1 all right so um, who's my 5 5 is x1 and who's y1 that is negative 1 and who's the slope right here there it is slope is 2 I think I can write this out so y my y value is minus 1 so I'm gonna write in plus 1 right do you remember from first semester that you have to kind of switch that sign equals my slope these are parallel so the slopes have to match so I'm gonna write 2 and that would be x and what's my x value it's positive 5 so I'm gonna write negative 5 all right it's in point slope form they will want you to write the equation in like it says slope intercept form so let's convert this into slope intercept form the y plus 1 will just wait while I distribute 2 times x 2x and 2 times negative 5 would be negative 10 all right last step is to get rid of that 1 I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides those will cancel and I get y equals 2x and how about negative 10 and negative 1 that would add up to negative 11 okay and that would be the equation for this line right here you do need to know the point slope form in order to figure that out and you need to know that the opposite sides in a parallelogram are parallel and that means their slopes are the same 
All right, number 15 tells us we have a rectangle and it has diagonals that intersect at F. So let's see, if this is really a rectangle, all of these are right angles. It's never a bad idea to kind of note, write down what you know. This would be congruent to this. This would be congruent to this. And what do we know about the diagonals? They are all congruent to each other. Not just the ones getting bisected, but all of them. They're all the same length. Okay, so what do they tell me? That from A to D, that has a length of 16. From A to B, that has a length of 12. And from F to B, this has a length of 10. All right, so let's see if we can figure out what they're asking us. They want to know how far is it from B to C. Well, do you notice once we've marked this up, we can see that these opposite sides would have to be the same. So I'm going to say that BC also has a length of 16. And the reason is what? In a rectangle, comma, the opposite sides are congruent. That's, uh, that's why we know that whatever AD is, BC would have to be the same. Okay, then they ask us, well, how long is it from A to C? How long is it from A to C? Well, if this is 10, aren't they all 10? And if they want how far it is from A all the way to C, can you see how far that would be? That would be how far? 10 and another 10 makes 20. Okay, so what's our reason going to be? Well, we are going to say in a rectangle, the diagonals are congruent and they bisect each other. That is how we figured out that it would be 20. Okay, so marking it up and putting things down, you'd be surprised how easy the problem gets. All right, number 16 gives us a parallelogram. And they say, circle true or false for each statement and give a reason. So let's see, they're trying to tell us that angle JML, JML, that's where M's the vertex. Here's angle JML right there. That's that angle. And they're saying it's congruent to angle KLM. KLM, let me do this with a different color. KLM. Do you think those angles are true? Do you think that this angle right here is congruent to this angle right here? Well, can you see the blue one's obtuse and the red one's acute? So they're not, that's false, that's false. So what's the problem? Uh, the reason is those angles, those angles, if they were opposite angles, they'd be congruent, but what are these? Aren't these two what? Consec we're gonna write that the consecutive angles are supplementary not we'll even put it with caps not congruent okay there's our reason okay next they say uh, and remember they left the bars off these so that means the length the length of segment mn maybe i will clean this up so we're not looking at all that other stuff that we did for the last one Okay, so the length of segment MN, where is segment MN? Segment MN, that's this one right here. And the length of segment NK, that's this one right here. They are congruent, it says. They're trying to tell me that that's congruent. Would that really happen in a parallelogram? Yes. What's the reason? Well, it's that fourth property that we should know about, uh, the diagonals. bisect each other. So, so this segment JL sliced it perfectly in half. In fact, what does segment MK do to this one? Would those also be congruent to each other? Yes, but the problem didn't ask us about that. Okay, so uh, mark up the figure and kind of decide what's true and what's not. All right, here's number 17. We have a quadrilateral and it tells us they have angle measures inside the quadrilateral of 113 and 72 degrees. And it says give two, here's an interesting word right here, give what? Two possible angle measures that could be the measure of the, of the quadrilateral's other two angles. So do you kind of get what's going on here? We have some sort of quadrilateral 
doesn't say it's a parallelogram or anything like that. So, and they are saying that one of the angles is 113 degrees and another angle is 72 degrees. Okay, and basically the question is, what could these other two angles be? Now, do you realize if we had all three, we could figure out what the last one is for sure? But we don't have three, we only have two. So, like these two could be all kinds of different combinations, and that's why they want us to come up with a couple of pairs. So, do you notice what we, what, what do we know about all four angles in a quadrilateral? They add up to 360. So, couldn't I take the 113 and the 72 and add them together that's going to give me 185 degrees and then I'm going to take what what all of them add up to 360 and subtract away the 185 and so let's see that would give me uh, I need to borrow again 7 175 there's 175 degrees left for these two angles right here now, could one of them be like 174 and the other one could be one degree? Or this could be 173 and this could be two degrees? As long as they add up to 175 so that everything adds up to 360, does it make sense that that would, um, that would make it work? All right, so, um, so you just have to come up with two combinations. So what if I said one of them was 100 degrees? Well, wouldn't the other one have to be the 75? And what if I said this was 125 degrees? Wouldn't this be like 50 degrees? And could you have come up with all kinds of other combinations? As long as your two angles make up the other 175 so that these two all add up to 360, that, that's all that needs to happen. And uh, if your teacher has allowed it, um, using a calculator would be helpful, or you could just work it out by hand. Either way, all, all four angles always have to add up to 360 degrees so you just have to show that you know that all right number 14 the the thing we need to notice is that they tell us we have a rhombus <coughs> so I'm gonna really mark this thing up a lot we know in a rhombus all four sides are the same it's a special type of parallelogram that's equilateral uh, we even know that uh, these angles right here when the diagonals cross they make a bunch of right angles and here's maybe the most important part of this um, maybe I'll get a different color nope it won't let me have a different color the diagonals when they get to this angle right here they cut it in half so those are the same and these are the same right if this was like a 50 degree angle each of these would be 25 and this shorter diagonal also does the same thing to this angle cuts it in half if this was a hundred degrees each of these would be 50 and these get cut in half so when they tell us that angle e a d all right where is that e a d e a d that's this one right here is 25 degrees and then they ask for b c d b c d that's this whole angle right here well, if this one's 25, what would this one be? 25, and that would make this whole thing 50. And these right here are opposite angles. And a rhombus is a type of parallelogram, so they must be the same. And that means that angle B, <coughs> angle B C, D, excuse me, would be 50 degrees. What would this whole angle be? Well, if this one's 50, wouldn't this one be 130? because they are consecutive angles. Anyway, it didn't ask for that. Um, but those are the relationships of the angles in a rhombus. The diagonals split the angles in half, and the opposite angles are congruent, and so forth. We, we did have perpendicular diagonals right here. We didn't end up needing those. All right, number 19 says check one box. Can you, that's what, bolded and underlined? They're really trying to show it. One box in each row one box in each row to match the quadrilateral with its definition. So these are columns and this is a row. So and what does it say? Check only one. And this is a row and th they'll have you do exactly the same thing on the test. Check one, like we're trying to give you some help. So we're only going to check one box to match the quadrilateral with its definition. So a square 
Is a square a four-sided polygon? Yes, but it's like way more than just having four sides. Is it a four-sided polygon where both pairs of opposite sides are parallel? Yes, it is a parallelogram. But a regular four-sided polygon? Well, what does regular mean? It means the polygon is both equilateral and equiangular. That would be the best one to check. Okay, how about a parallelogram? Well, can you see that that's the definition for a parallelogram right there? That's the only box we would check. Of course, a parallelogram is four-sided, but this one is a better description, and we're only checking one box. And what's the best definition for a quadrilateral? Simply a polygon with four sides? Yes. So don't check more than one box. We will mark you down. Follow directions. It'll be the same way on the test. It'll ask you to do one. You might even take your paper and cover up the rows, right? So you're only looking at one each time. And you just have to kind of know those definitions for some of the quadrilaterals we've studied in this unit. All right. You are welcome to review this video as many times as you need. Thank you if you made it all the way to the end. Um, hopefully us going over these problems will get you off to a good start on the first test of semester two. Number three, we're going to figure out which three-dimensional geometric object is created by rotating the flag 300 degrees around the flagpole. So we can look at this and try to imagine if it were rotated, we would see that this flag would look like this. And that is going to create the three-dimensional cone. Number four, we have a cylinder shown below with um, a horizontal axis, axis and a vertical axis. What are the vertical and horizontal cross sections of the cylinder? So we're very specifically going to write down horizontal. The horizontal cross section would be if we were to slice this horizontally, we would see a circle. Okay, and looking down at the base kind of helps you with that. So we know that the horizontal cross section is a circle. And then for the vertical cross section, which is that line up and down, if we were to vertically divide this uh, cylinder, you would see a square. Okay, so the, the cross section would be a square happening here. Or I'm sorry, not a square, a rectangle. Rectangle. We don't want to assume it's a square. Okay, so that would be your horizontal cross section and then vertical cross section of a cylinder. Okay, problem number 18 wants us to solve this equation using the quadratic formula. So I'm going to go ahead and write out the quadratic formula. You need to have it memorized for the test, and that is what the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. All right, and if you know me, uh, I guess I'm going to work out what the a, B, and C values are, so the A value is 2, the B value is negative 7, and the C value is 3. And if you know me, I like to set up the whole formula with empty parentheses. Opposite of B, plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 times A times C all over 2 times A. All right, let's fill in our values. Here and here, we get the B value, right? B value. So who am I putting in? Negative 7. Okay, and who goes here and here? The A value. That's going to go there and there. And who are the A values? The A values are 2. So a 2 there and a 2 there. And finally, the C value goes right there. And that C value is 3. I'm going to fill in the 3 right there. All right, we got it all filled out. Uh, if you're in my class, you know, I think we should do this part first. So let's do that part first. Uh, what's that going to look like? It's going to look like negative 7 squared minus 4 times 2 times 3. All right, let's do this. This is the place where people make the most mistakes. Negative 4 times 2. How much? Negative 8. And how about negative 8 times 3? All works out to be negative 24. All right, negative 7 times itself comes out to be 49, and 49 minus 24 would all come out to be 25. You could do that on your calculator. So this whole weird 
difficult thing just comes out to be 25. All right, let's go back to the problem. X equals, how about the opposite of negative 7? Positive 7 plus or minus the square root of how much? 25 all over 2 times 2 is 4. All right, we can take the square root of 25. So now I've got 7 plus or minus 5 all over 4, and it's time to break this into two separate problems. 7 plus 5 over 4 and 7 minus 5 over 4. 7 plus 5 is 12 over 4, and that all comes out to be 3. 7 minus 5 comes out to be 2 over 4. Now you can't divide 4 into 2. It, it's 2 is too small. But it does reduce, and it would reduce down to 1 half, and there are our two solutions. All right, here's number 19. They are asking us to graph the solution to this linear inequality. Uh, first thing I will notice is it's in good old slope intercept form. So let's see, what would the slope be? It's negative four over three. And what's the y intercept point? Right there, it's at zero, one. Let's plot zero, one right there. Zero, one. You should label your point. All right, where's the other um, point gonna be? We're going to use our slope to get it, so I'm going to go down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1, 2, 3. There is the spot, and that is the point over 3 and down, down 3. All right, at this point, we need to choose our line. So what should I use, a solid or a dotted line? That's going to be a dotted line. So here comes my dotted line, not the straightest. Remember, a long line is better than a short line. All right, this divided my coordinate plane into two sides. One side's the true side that I'm looking for. The other side's the false side. And the best way to figure out which side is which is just to use a test point. All right, so I'm going to use my good friend 0, 0 as my test point. So here I go. I'm going to substitute 0, 0 into this. Why? What would I write? zero. Zero is greater than negative four thirds times my x value. You see it right there on my test point is zero plus one. All right, uh, what do we get here? Zero is negative four thirds times zero. That's zero. Zero plus one is one. Is zero greater than one? No, that is false. Zero is smaller than one. So that means this test point came out to be false, and that means <clears throat> that the other side of the line must be the true side. So I'm going to shade this side right here. That's my true side. All right. Um, if I don't, uh, in my class, if I don't see the work of you testing a point, I won't give you any credit for your shading. Like anybody can guess. I don't care about that. I want you to prove to me why one side is the true side and one side isn't. So I need to see you test a point. So make sure you know how to do that. You don't even have to put test zero, 0, and this this is what you're testing it into. Anyway, it says pick one point that that's a solution. So any point over here that is a solution would be good. Uh, I'm going to go with over 5, up 5. Sound good to you? 5, 5, that would be a, t a good um, solution point. 